So today we're going to be talking about, is it worth it to replace the heat break, which is this bit here, and it sits inside of your heat sink. Uh, is it worth replacing that bit with a bimetal heat break? So the difference between a bimetal heat break is that first of all, it's normally two different metals, so it's bimetal. So this is the bimetal heat break that's compatible with this kind of setup. But more importantly, you get rid of the PTFE tubing that goes all the way down and touches the nozzle. And rather than it touching the nozzle, it will only sit just right there, just before uh, entering through the rest of the, the actual filament path. And the idea here is that right now with this setup, you're kind of limited to 240 degrees Celsius because that's kind of the max temperature for these PTFE tubes. If you push it to 260, um, you won't get very uh, much printing out of it, to be honest, because it'll, it'll start deforming and melting. It'll also start to release some very toxic chemicals. So 240 is actually the max that you would print here. So if you wanted to print some higher temp materials that could potentially be abrasive, um, and you, you want to be able to maybe replace the, the PTFE tubes to go from 240 to 260, um, you need a, a bimetal heat break or an all metal hot end. And unfortunately, um, if, if I want to make this quick, um, don't bother. It, it's not, it's not going to work. It, it can work, but not with what you're thinking you can do to change maybe in slicer profile settings. It's not an issue with the slicer. It's not an issue with some settings that you're thinking you can just tweak because you will get nothing but stringing after stringing after stringing. So here's an example of what I did for a temp tower. And I didn't do this just once. I did this uh, three, two times here. So here's another bit here of another temp tower. Here's another temp tower. Uh, and then here's some bridging with temps. And I, I did things from, basically I went from one to 12 for retractions uh, distance. And then I went from 10 to 75 for retraction speeds. And then I also tried different temps going all the way down to 170. And no matter what I did, I got nothing but stringing. Um, there is no solution to that. And you can still do prints off of it, but you'll be dealing with like this excessive kind of herring. And then these, this, this was some excessive like thick stringing uh, that you see right there. You can get rid of it. You can clean it up. It's just uh, it's terrible, terrible for print quality in general. And there's a lot to this. So first of all, this is a unique heat sink. Um, there is no other heat sink that I found that has specifically a, a six millimeter diameter, um, kind of throat for, for the heat break to fit into. And the general issue with this throat or this heat break is that the diameter over maybe like a traditional Ender 3 style heat break is um, much thinner. So you're having the heat kind of just rapidly run through all of this and heating this entire bit up. So what's happening is that the heat is transferring to the heat sink as it should. Even if you put thermal paste, it doesn't matter. Um, but there's not enough time for the heat to dissipate in such a small bit of metal on top of that, the shroud that comes with this printer is um, kind of thermally limiting a lot of the cooling availability. So this shroud that you see with the anti-cubic co, uh, heat is not able to escape fast enough from here. And then it's it's not, uh, this, shr this, I don't know, this design isn't able to bring enough cool air in with the 4010 fan. Maybe if you upgrade it to a 4010 or 4028 fan, you can have some success with that, but that won't fit in this shroud here. The, uh, the 4020 does not fit in this shroud, unfortunately. So alternatively, there is a shroud that you can print, and I've butchered this here for another reason, but this, this shroud is compatible with the Anycubic Go, allows a lot more airflow, and I can tell you right now, it does not fix a damn thing. Even though it helps a lot with cooling the heat sink, uh, it doesn't do enough, unfortunately. So uh, if you didn't already see the solution, or at least one of the solutions, is to replace this very, very small heat sink with the original V5 uh, clone design that you see on the other Anycubic uh, printers. And you can see just how much more metal there is for um, kind of the heat to move around and escape and uh, not cause it. So this is a temp tower I just finished printing 
from four to nine, and you can see around six and seven, it's pretty good. And just in contrast, that same temp tower that I had shown before was the same four through nine. So yeah, it's not an issue <laughs> um, with uh, cooling the heat sink. It's uh, like a, a, a thermal limitation, unfortunately, with this heat sink design. And again, I cannot find anything in the market. I was thinking maybe I can shoot, find something that's a better qu high quality metal that can uh, maybe dissipate heat faster. Um, but there's nothing that comes with a six millimeter throat. All of them come with a seven millimeter throat. That's the CR10. So the question would be, well, can I just take like an Ender 3 style type of heat sink and an Ender 3 style uh, heat, uh, bimetal heat break instead? So you can take something like this along coupled with the thicker, you know, seven millimeter heat break and have far more success. And I did have some success. So I will say that, I'm going to put this back on the mount so I'm not moving the camera over. If you go this route, um, you'll be buying more than a uh, bimetal heat break. You need to buy um, the seven millimeter bimetal heat break with an Ender 3 style hot end. And I was able to work with this for, uh, and get maybe like a, anywhere between 2.5 to four millimeter retraction and reduction retraction, and it worked-ish. I still got some stringing. And that has to do with the original shroud design that you have here. Uh, is just counterproductive to cooling off this heat sink properly. Um, you will probably have to dive into um, getting a, a bigger um, kind of heat sink cooler rather than the 4010, that little thing that you get. Or you can do what I've done so far, which unfortunately is not an easy solution. Now I'll tell you why, uh, which is this, just going with the original V6, uh, or sorry, V5, heat sink design and the reason why is that you need to change the marlin firmware to change the min z position from negative 10 to 0 or in clipper to change it from negative 10 to 0 so here you're recompiling firmware it does not fit in a shroud so you have to print a custom uh, or an e3d an e3d v6 v5 mount for an ender 3 um, and so that's what i printed here uh, that's that works but uh, it doesn't work with the shroud because all of this stuff gets pushed way down and it's too thick, so it doesn't work. So I actually um, took a uh, uh, some heating device and cut the, sh the fan that was here to allow cooling to come on this side here. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, you need to change your firmware settings to have that type of heat sink versus maybe using an Ender 3 type of heat sink. Um, you can also potentially use uh, a CR6 that has a bigger heat sink uh, and it had, may give you some success. Uh, I'm waiting on that. So I may make a second uh, part two to this kind of adventure. But the reality is, is that you might, I would just say stay away from a bimetal heat break. And on top of all that, if you have a bimetal heat break, you're like, okay, well I can push the now to 260. Maybe, you know, if I'm going to sit here and recompile the firmware, then I might as well recompile it so I can push it up to 300 degrees Celsius and get access to even more materials. So I want to go ahead and mix my bimetal heat break with a hardened nozzle. So this comes into picture, this type of nozzle. And just, just for reference, uh, you have your regular brass nozzle here. So this is very thermally conductive, and then you have your hard steel nozzle, which is not very thermally conductive. Um, the recommendation when you switch to a heat break in general, by metal heat break, is that you reduce your print temps about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. But when you have a hard nozzle, you actually need to increase your print temps 10 degrees Celsius. So you have two fighting things where you'll have uh, excessive molten filament in the, in the heat break that can't make it to the nozzle because uh, it's just having heat creep issues. It's not able to properly cool down with this uh, heat break. And it could be the heat break design or it could just be the fact that this, or sorry, the heat sink design or that the, the, the heat break is just too thin of a material, too much heat's being tramped or kind of rapidly pushed through the metal. Um, but yeah, it, it just doesn't work. You're just gonna get jamming. No matter what you try, what temps that you try it at, how slow you print, 
for whatever traction speeds, the flow rates, does not matter, you will get jamming eventually. So I've had prints successfully out of the combinations, but they are extremely stringy. And then about maybe, I don't know, five or six hours into a print, it'll just, it'll eventually just clog and not print anymore. Uh, it's not a, a very, you can maybe get like a couple hours out of printing out of it with a bunch of uh, extruder clicking and uh, a lot of stringing, but beyond that, it's not a good solution. So unfortunately, this doesn't come to a, a good uh, recommendation other than um, you may want to just replace your hot end altogether um, with either the original E3DV5 hot end or maybe like a CR6 um, style hot end because while this is possible to switch the heat sink and the, and the heat break to an Ender 3 style, the, that original shroud design, like I said, right here is counterproductive. It, it's not it's not allowing the heat to escape as it needs to. And you'd be like, okay, well, what about an all-metal hot end? It's even more worse. So I have a couple all-metal Ender 3 style hot ends that I was trying on here. So here's one where the coupler is just sits right there. And then you have this like um, titanium heat break that's really short. And it goes into the head of the, the, the heat sink here. And um, this would just get piping hot. Even if I take out the screws that screw into here um, with a different type of uh, heat sink, does not matter. It gets too hot. There's not, like again, this shroud is so counterproductive to properly cooling the uh, things. I also tried one, I'm trying to look for it here. I don't think, um, okay. So I also tried one that was a bit more tailored. Am I not gonna find, there we go. Uh, where the coupler is built into it, and then you also only have that, uh, that titanium heat break right there with this, but it's the same exact story. This just gets so piping hot uh, and cannot be cooled properly. So, yeah, again, it doesn't end in a good story here. There's no, this is, you just need to buy this one heat break. You're going to, you're going to be fine. You know, it's going to work out. You're going to, you're not going to have all these issues with prints. No, you're going to have issues. Um, and so yeah, if you want to print just a tad bit hotter, going from 240 to 260 without having to do any custom prints to change out the shroud, recompiling the firmware, uh, my current answer to that is don't bother uh, at all because you're not going to have any success. Maybe you might have some success with an Ender 3 style uh, heat sink where it has the seven millimeter diameter here and a seven millimeter diameter uh, heat break, but also by metal. But beyond that, um, I just don't recommend it. There's too much involved for you to try to get this stuff to work. And while I would recommend replacing this in general, um, when you also are fighting against the shroud design, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help. And again, recompiling firmware is not to everyone's cup of tea. So yeah, um, it sucks. And um, if anyone else has tried I don't know, any other bimetal heat break that has worked on this type of printer, uh, specifically in Cubic Go Go, just leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll see if I can try it. Uh, but beyond that, just don't bother.